I'm Chili Dilly, the personality pickle. Packed in a jar for the freshest flavor. Served cold in a sack for you to savor. So dainty to eat, no muss, no fuss. An ideal snack for all of us. Crisp, tender, and tasty with a bit of spice. Buy one now. Taste how nice. Snack bar clerks will knock themselves silly. Speeding your order for a real Chili Dilly. American General Pictures imprisons you in a bloody web of terror. Spider Baby has the seductive innocence of Lolita and the savage hunger of a black widow. Spider Baby will give you nightmares forever. No man that loves her lives to love another. Her sweet kisses engulf you in a bloody web of horror. Spider Baby will thrill you, then kill you. Starring Spider Baby and Lon Chaney. For the horror thrill of your life, see Spider Baby from American General Pictures. Master Seth, Master of Ceremonies. To my right is Mistress Dandelion, the Queen of Creep. To my left is the Boy with No Name. And we're here to take you on a journey into the most ridiculous, bizarre, horror, cult, sci-fi, and exploitation films you've ever seen. Now, before we begin, I want to say that what we are trying to do with this is continue a die-hard American tradition. And that is that of the movie host. Now, back in the days before streaming, before even before VHS and DVD, you had to go on TV to watch movies. And sometimes, if you were lucky, these movies would have somebody showing up at the commercial breaks to host it. And this was especially true of the horror genre, where you had people like uh, Vampyra, people like Zachary, uh, in later years, you had things like Commander USA, uh, you had Goulardi, Rhonda Shear and Gilbert Gottfried on USA's Up All Night, Sandra Bernhardt on Real Wild Cinema, The Immortal Elvira, Joe Bob Briggs, uh, Sven Gulli, who still goes on to this day. Um, so anyway, that's what we want to do here. That's what we want to do. Even though there's no commercial breaks, there still is a charm in just... Uh, even if you're by yourself watching a movie, having somebody with you that you can talk to about it. And that's who I am. I'm your person that you can talk to about it. So, depending on what you think of the films, hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that shit. I don't know how any of that stuff works, but I'm learning. So anyway, our movie for tonight is the 60's classic Spider Baby. Directed by Jack Hill, uh, starring the late, great Lon Chaney Jr., and the always entertaining Sid Haig in a very early role. Pay special attention to the opening theme song, which is sang by Lon Chaney Jr. And strangely enough, it was not his biggest hit. But we'll get into that later on. In the meantime, enjoy the insanely fun opening to Spider Baby. Or the maddest story that's ever been told. <laughs> Dreams of bones and bats and bones and 
cage monsters in haunted homes, a ghost on the stair, a vampire's bite, better beware, <laughs> there's a full moon tonight. Boys and ghouls having a ball. <laughs> Frankenstein, Dracula, and even the mummy are sure to end up in somebody's tummy. <laughs> Toadstools and weeds, and add an old owl and the young one she breeds, makes in seven legs from an eight legged piece, and then you're all set for a cannibal feast. Sit round a fire with this cup of brew, a fiend and a werewolf on each side of you. This cannibal orgy is strange to behold, and the maddest story ever told. so-called because its only known occurrence is among the descendants of one Ebenezer Mary, a progressive age regression beginning about the 10th year and continuing steadily throughout the victim's lifetime. It is believed that eventually the victim of the Mary syndrome may even regress beyond the prenatal level, reverting to a pre-human condition of savagery and cannibalism. Many authorities do not accept the existence of the Mary Syndrome. Incredible, but true. Nevertheless, I know only too well. Of course, there's no Mary Syndrome anymore. It was extinguished forever from the human race that fateful day ten years ago. We don't know anything about it.
anybody home? Please say yes, somebody's home. right in my spiderweb. And now the spider gets to give the bug a big sting. Elizabeth! Bruno, Virginia hurt somebody real bad. You ought to hate her. Elizabeth, how many times have I told you it's not nice to hate? Now. Ralph. Ralph. 
We're on now. Virginia, now you stay right there. Keep going, sit down. Sit down. You too, Elizabeth. Now, children, I want to tell you something, and I want you to listen very, very carefully. You remember last time when those two children climbed over the wall and Virginia almost caught them in her spider web? Mm -hmm. Well, that got people to wondering about us. And that's bad. Your daddy wouldn't like that, Virginia. Now, I can't be here all the time. You know that I have to take Ralph into the city to the doctor once in a while. And Virginia, you were supposed to mind your sister. You were not supposed to play spider anymore. Now, you never, never can play spider again. Oh, Ralph, what have you got there? Something that man had. Oh, Ralph, give it to me. That's it. Thank you, Ralph. Huh. This is from a lawyer. Yeah, a lawyer. What is this, Bruno? Something bad, isn't it? How many times do I have to tell you just because something isn't good doesn't mean it's bad? I mean, Must be something very bad. Nothing is very bad. It isn't? He's going to come here and bring other people. Daddy wouldn't like that. What other people? They want to make, they want to become your legal guardians. As the only other known surviving heirs of the estate of Titus W. Mary. Isn't that daddy? Uh, on the 14th of... Today's the 14th. Children, we've got to keep some secrets today.
want that for? Hurry up. I want to watch Uncle Nick. You're not supposed to. I'm coming, Uncle Ned. Coming, Uncle Ned. Really, Emily? I mean, I wish you'd kind of... Peter, if you don't like my driving, you may feel free to take a trolley. Now, wait just a minute. This was not my idea. I've, I've never heard of the Mary family. What is that? There are darling, it behooves us to meet them. All right. I mean, you know, all right. But remember that it was not my idea, okay? Of course not, darling. You don't have ideas, baby Peter, brother. in the world makes you think this is the right road. It's got to be. Ha! There, you see? So, this is it. I don't see any sign of, uh, what's his name? Uh, the lawyer. Obviously he hasn't arrived as yet. The caretaker, he probably went to meet him in a horse and buggy. Might as well go on up. They'll be along any minute. Why don't we, uh... What's the matter, Peter? Chicken? Well, I just don't think it's, you know, just right to go barging in on somebody that you're about to sue. Oh, just remember, we're trying to avoid that expense, if possible. Well, huh. I'll leave that up to you. Okay, so we're, we're uh, about 20 minutes into Spider Baby. Uh, I want to talk about Manton Moreland, who, was, uh, who played the messenger who got his ear cut off by Virginia. Um, Manton Moreland, uh, was, uh, he ran away from home in 1910 and joined minstrel shows. And after that... He did what they called race films for many years, which were basically just films films focusing on stereotypes of African Americans, um, vaudeville, that kind of thing, you know. And uh, he did this for for years while it was popular. But by the time of Spider Baby, his as far as I know, his final role uh, that was kind of dying out, and his style of comedy didn't really have a place anymore. Um, he's most notable for being in the film King of the Zombies, which I want to say was late 30s, late 30s, early 40s, 40s. Yeah. could have been. I think so, 40s, maybe even early 50s. No, I want to say 40s. before early 50s, but, wait. however, all of you at home have a device in your pocket, or you're looking at that device right now, which has all of the history of humankind <laughs> at your fingertips. So go ahead and look it up, King of the Zombies. Um, you're very familiar with it if you are someone who buys DVDs at the Dollar Tree. 
like we are, like we have been in the past before they got rid of their DVDs. You remember? I do. You remember when the Dollar Tree used to have DVDs every Halloween time? Absolutely. You could get, you could get uh, the Phantom Creeps with Bella Lugosi. Yep. You could get King of the Zombies. You get all kinds of stuff. You know, they came in those thin cases. Yeah, we used to score every year. Cartoons especially. Big mm-hmm. mixes of cartoons. Yep. You know? Great for when you have a child and no money. Remember you the know? playing cards? They, they, we got a bunch of playing cards. Yes, a whole deck of them. and the Mummy... The werewolf. Curse of the werewolf. Curse of the werewolf. Starring Oliver Reed. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> King Kong. King Kong. Uh, uh, the glory days when Dollar Tree had good stuff. Indeed. Anyway, yeah, that was Matt Moreland as the messenger. We'll get more into the cast, but I do think that uh, Matt Moreland was brilliant casting on the part of Jack Hill, the director. We'll get into him again. Uh, and Ralph. Was, yeah, Ralph. How about Ralph? He's such a baby. He's so he young. Ralph is a young Sid Haig, who modern audiences all know as Captain Spaulding of the Firefly family in the Rob Zombie movies. Sid Haig was a uh, was a was a student actor when he was in college. He acted in a number of films for Jack Hill, films for Roger Corman. He was in a number of the, uh, what they call the black exploitation films of the 70s. Uh, he retired from acting in the early 90s and became a licensed hypnotherapist. But sometimes the call comes and he was uh, called up by Rob Zombie. Well, no, that's not true. He was offered the role of Marcellus Wallace in Pulp Fiction. Was but he? he? Yes. Yes, he was. Which would go on to be played by Bing Rames. Right. Beautifully. Who was amazing. I would have liked to see Sid Haig in that, though. It would have been I would have liked to see thought. that. At least a screen test. Definitely an interesting thought. But he said, he, he, he turned it down, was sick of being typecast as heavies and tough guys, and wow. uh, saw the success of Pulp Fiction and decided that was a big mistake. And so when Tarantino <laughs> wrote the part of the judge in Jackie Brown, specifically for him, he jumped on it. And after that, he got discovered by Rob Zombie, and now we have the Sid Haig we know and love. He's a regular at horror conventions. Uh, known for not charging abhorrent amounts for his autograph. If you bring something to him, and you want him to autograph it, I believe he'll charge you $5. That's great. If you want to buy something from him, a picture, and have him autograph it, I believe it's 10 I believe you have to pay money if you want someone to take a picture of you with him. But if you have your own camera, then it's free. Wow. I think. I cannot verify all of this. But I remember hearing something along these lines. So, all hail Sid Haig. Rest in peace, Matt and Moreland. Uh, we're, uh, Lon not Jr. too far off. Uh, yes, Lon Chaney Jr. That's a whole segment unto itself. Lon Chaney Jr. Yes. We'll get to Lon Chaney Jr. here soon, after we've seen a little bit more of him. But I will say, with the exception of the Wolfman, this is my personal favorite Lon Chaney Jr. performance. He's amazing in this. He's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, there's one monologue, it's coming up later. And it, it, you, it, if it doesn't bring tears to your eyes, I don't know where your humanity has gone. I agree. You have no heart, then. So anyway, let's get back to Spider Baby.
whatever. You saw a ghost, right? Don't be funny. There was a... There was a awful... A, a, a baboon. Well, let's not have a complete double duck. Sit. What's going on here? Why have we stopped? They're blasting up ahead, sir. Yeah, what? Blasting, sir, for the new highway. Oh. Well, better wait it out, I suppose. Yes, sir. They won't be long, sir, Mr. Shocker. The name is Schlocker, Mr. Bruno. Oh, oh please, sir. Uh, Bruno. Just plain Bruno, sir. Oh. Come on, buddy. Let's get this car out of here. Yes, sir. Yes. Ah, I give us off. So nice to see you here. And the young Mr. Hall. Hi, Slocker. How are you? Good to see you, my boy. B, this is my secretary, Miss Morris. Hi, Miss Morris. How do you do? Hi. Skip the rest of it, Slocker. Let's go in and take a look at the place. Oh, yes, I, I've been away from the children too long already. Uh, he, you just uh, follow me, and I'll show you where to park your machine. Uh, but if I may ask a favor, please, uh, please treat the children tactfully. You see, they're not accustomed to uh, strangers, and they might act wild if, if encouraged. Now, ladies, this is your Auntie Emily and your Uncle Peter. Elizabeth and Virginia. Well, There's two pretty names for two such pretty young ladies. Uh, this is Miss... Uh... Anne. Anne. Uh... Ralph, where's Ralph? Ralph! Ralph! Virginia! He's just a big kid. Yes, it's like you say, sir. He's just a, a big kid. <laughs> now, see here, Bruno. Uh, you don't seem to realize just how serious all this is. Now, these uh, children are obviously in need of qualified professional care. Wouldn't you say? Well, uh, there's a great deal in what you say, sir. But uh, I gave their father a solemn oath that I'd never allow their unfortunate malady to become the object of public scrutiny. Nonsense. The days when we hid our insane behind walls of shame went out with, with that old car of yours. They're talking about us, Virginia. I know. But, Mr. Shocker, and off to a dying man. That can't be taken lightly. Now, uh, Bruno, what do you mean by malady? I mean, well, I've seen backward kids. Is it... Well, no, it's, it's, it's more than a retardation. It's a, sort of a, a regression, a, a progressive deterioration of the mental faculties, a, a rotting of the brain, so to speak. It uh, begins in late childhood and progresses rapidly, uh, ultimately resulting in physical deformity, rather like uh, the last stages of uh, paresis. Really that bad? Yes, uh, the Mary family, or at least uh, this branch of them, uh, have been afflicted for generations. And I'm sorry to say, sir, I, I think this is the last generation. What a shame. Bruno, you mean all three of these? Yes, sir. Uh, the unfortunate result of inbreeding. Uh, never mind that now, Bruno. We can go into all that at the proper time. Mm. Let's see. Yes. 
I would like to know the whereabouts of certain other members of the Mary family. The, uh, two sisters of Titus W. Mary and brother named, I believe, Nedrick Mary, if alive. Alive? Well, uh, you might say so, sir. Come on, Bruno, don't beat around the bush. Are they around or not? They're talking about Uncle Ned. I know. Well, it, it became necessary to put them in a, a, a more private sort of an institution. My good man, are you saying that you... that the family chauffeur has been in sole charge of this entire estate and these minor children? Oh, I never thought of it that way, sir. You see, I, I promised the master Yeah, that... yeah, yeah, we know all about that. Listen, Schlocker, it's been a long trip. I'd like to get cleaned up and... Get off my feet for a while. We can go through this after dinner. Dinner? Yes, uh, it is dinner time. Matter of fact, Bruno, we intend to spend the night. Oh, no, sir. That's quite impossible. Why, why, we're not prepared for guests. There seems to be a difference of opinion as to who is the guest and who the host here. <laughs> uh, you do have food in the house, don't you? Why, uh, yes, sir. You see, our diet is very austere. But I suppose we could find something. Yes. Yes, I suppose we could. Uh -huh. I smell a bug. Ralph is ready, Bruno. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. Bring him right down. My dear, there's no doubt in my mind that we have here an absolutely clear-cut prima facie open and shut case. Great. Now, all I want to know is what is it worth in dollars and cents? Well, that's a little difficult to tell at this juncture. Uh, oh. Perhaps with an audit... Uh, Miss Morris, give me schedule B. All right here, Mr. Schlager. Yes. Of course, this is only the visible part of the iceberg, so to speak. With, with more information, we can project the curve. Uh, hey. Hi, Ralph. Everybody, look at Ralph. He's getting all dressed up for us. Oh, yes, isn't he cute? Winifred now? Winifred? Oh, no, 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 not now. Can't she wait? If she gets hungry, she'll go looking for something to eat. Oh, oh, oh. in that case, you go right ahead. But hurry up, hurry up. I, I will, I will. Uh, hungry, Miss Morris? Oh, yes. I'm famished. Shall we then? Well, uh, there we are. Uh, just sit wherever you like. Uh, we're not very formal here at uh, Mary House. We haven't had uh, guests in a long time. No, it, it, it's been a long, long time. Uh, I, I might add that it's a great pleasure. You can sit down now, Ralph.
Winifred. Winifred. Your chair, Virginia, please. Hola! <laughs> what is that? Well, that's rabbit. Obviously. Not bad, Bruno. Looks done to a turn. Thank you, sir. I hope you enjoy it. You know, we're very fortunate to have meat for our guests. You see, uh, we're vegetarian. Vegetarian? It's dead. We don't eat dead things. But good Lord, man, why on earth? The master. Don't say it. You made a promise. It was no idle whim, I assure you. The master knew of the grave danger. The danger? Yes, Bruno. What is that supposed to mean? Well, the master believed and... He should know that the eating of flesh would hasten the progress of their condition. No, I've heard everything. Wait a minute, Bruno. Now, you mean like that old story about the lion cub, who's actually tame until he gets his first taste of fresh meat, right? I'm afraid it's even more serious than that, sir. Well, whatever that is, a rabbit or whatever, I pass. Well, it looks good to me. Hey, I'll carve. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Carry on. Oh, and I must tell you all, you have Ralph here to thank for providing it. Is that right? Good for you, Ralph. <laughs> well, uh, I'll have something else. Thank you. What do you call these? Ah. Uh, a rare treat. Our favorite dish. We call it uh, souffled fungi. What? Mushroom schlocker. Oh, <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> a real staple. They grow profusely on the ground. And uh, <laughs> did Ralph... Oh, no, no. Virginia provided these. You see, she has an uncanny knack for picking only the uh, non-poisonous ones. Come on, Schlocker, let's not hog this stuff. Thank you, Uncle Peter. Thank you, Uncle Peter. Hey, Schlocker, you certainly can't say they're not polite. <laughs> well, Miss Howe. If you don't feel up to the heavy affair, perhaps you'd like to try some of our fresh garden greens? Yeah, Emily. Here, try the salad. Uh, allow me. This thing isn't dressed. Isn't Ralph a vegetarian, too? Oh, yes. But Ralph's allowed to eat anything that he catches. Oh. Emily, this is very good. You don't know what you're missing. As I told you, our diet is very austere. But it's most healthful. You know, that's great. I think everybody ought to eat like that. Oh, we have our delicacies, too. But they're not in season right now. Oh, 
Oh, no, no, sir. Uh, you wouldn't want any of that. Oh, no. Well, I guess not. Yeah. What do you think about spending the night now, Emily? You couldn't drag me away, Peter. Good show, my dear. I'm with you. Oh, it's like I told you, sir. It's well, absolutely... there's nothing more to say, Bruno. Now, now, let's make things easy on yourself. We want to be fair. The sisters can move in together, and you and, um, Ralph. Well, uh, we might do that. Oh, no, no. It's quite impossible. It's too dangerous. Hey, you see, uh, this is an old building. Uh, the, the wood is rotten. Uh, you'd, you'd have to know your way about in the dark. Nonsense. The next thing you'll tell us, it's haunted. Oh, oh no, nothing like that. He means they're vampires. Oh, yes, and werewolves. Are you a horror film fan, Miss Morse? Oh, yes, I love it. Dracula, Frankenstein. And the mummy? Oh, the mummy. I love the mummy. The way he walks. Step scrape. Step scrape. Oh, and the wolf man. Ah! There's going to be a full moon tonight. Mr. Schlocker, I mean, uh, if you don't need me anymore tonight, I, I could just as well stay in down. There's an inn in the village. Um, as I see it, there are only two rooms anyway. Uh, Peter, if you took the car, do you think you could find lodgings for Miss Morris? Yeah, I saw a motel coming in, yeah. Fine, fine. Good idea. <laughs> just be sure you have her back on time, young man. Busy day ahead, you know. Don't worry. Thank you, Mr. Howe. You're very welcome. Children, some of our guests are going to stay the night. Would you come help me prepare the rooms? Yes, Bruno. <laughs> Spider! Got it. He spiders. We have lots of spiders. Do you like spiders, Mr. Howe? Oh, sure, Virginia. I love spiders. <laughs> Would you like to play spider with me? Virginia. Sure. I'll play spider with you. Maybe tomorrow. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Howe, that we couldn't accommodate everyone. Uh, but I'll be looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Hey, me too, Bruno. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night, kids. Uh, well, Miss uh, Morris, we should be getting an early start. I'd like that very much, Mr. Howe. Hey. This is the phoniest setup I've ever seen. There is something terribly wrong here. And I intend to find out exactly exactly what it is. Hey, you want to die, huh? Rev it up. Action you've never seen. Races across your screen as you thrill to a new dimension in picture making. Carnival of Souls. This is the shocking story of a who crawled from the river to race through a nightmare, walking a tightrope between heaven and hell. From the unreal, she crashes through to reality. But try as she will to lead a normal life, she is torn from a goal. There's no privacy in her life. She's ever watched, tormented. Either it's her neighbor, desirous of her physically, watching her with his leering eye, or it's the evil eye of the man, the man who taunts her, the man who wants her. From the bottom of the river they come. 
They reach for her. They demand that she dance with them at the Carnival of Souls. She is a girl driven mad by the relentless forces of the beyond. He will not relent as he comes for her again and again. She whirls between the real and the unreal, trying to cling to life. I like being with you, really I do. I don't want to be alone tonight. I want to be near you. Honey. You don't want to go in there all by yourself, do you? But she must watch herself in death. She must dance at the Carnival of Souls held just for her. For they have come for her for the last time, claiming her as one of their own. Carnival of Souls arouses such emotion that the management has been forced to state positively no refunds. Carnival of Souls is the shocker of all time, guaranteed to sweep you into a new dimension of picture making. You can't afford to miss Carnival of Souls. From ancient genesis to the modern screen, is the name written in blood, Ega. If I could just call you on the phone. The code of the ghost at the sign of the toe. Nobody lives on the Brownsville Road. Thrill to the newest recording star, Arturo Jr. Oh, they scream in this way. See ravishing Marilyn Manning in a thrilling, chilling story. The last of the prehistoric giants sees his first girl. Noah. Curious newsmen search deep in giant country for the last of the ancient cavemen. See a tough giant, tamed by the soft hands of his captive woman. See him sacrifice his ageless beard for her love. The loser to a boy in a dune buggy, escaping a burning desert. Ega's primitive passion was love or kill. Here, Ega talked the ancient language of love used at the beginning of time. Haunted souls hunt the living. The living whose bodies are the only food for these ungodly creatures. <coughs> Night of the living dead. A bizarre adventure in fear. An experience in shock, more shattering than your strangest nightmare. <coughs> Night of the living dead. <coughs> A night with the dead who cannot die. A night of total terror. <coughs> Thank you. 
Night. Of the living dead. All right, Spider Baby continues to roll on. You got Sid Haig coming up in the dumbwaiter. You got a dinner scene. Sure, is Texas Chainsaw Massacre a better film? Yes. Yes, it is. But the dinner scene in Spider Baby rivals the best scene in Texas Chainsaw Massacre for best dinner scene ever. In my personal opinion, it really does. You got, you got, you got, you got Jill Bannister, Virginia, uh, serving tumbleweeds to people. <laughs> you got a d- d- dead ass cat. You know, the cat looks like something that's already been eaten. It looks like a carcass you'd boil for cat stock. You know? I love that Uncle, Uncle Peter is just so happy to eat it. <laughs> a funny thing about Uncle Peter... Uncle Peter is the only person in this film that was ever nominated for an Academy Award. Oh. Not for acting, mind you. Oh. Uncle Peter wrote the script for The Deer Hunter and was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. That's crazy. Now, who else have we got in the film? We've got, of course, Lon Chaney Jr., who was born Creighton Chaney. Didn't start acting in films until after his father was dead. The great Lon Chaney. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Hunchback of Notre Dame. So many amazing roles Lon Chaney performed. Lon Chaney Jr. uh, A a powerhouse in his own right. Uh, The only actor to play all four of the great classic Universal monster movies. Of course, he played the Wolfman. We all know that. That was his. That was his uh, crowning achievement, of course. Although, I would believe his 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 uh, part in Spider Baby is just as good great. as his part in the Wolfman. Absolutely. Uh, he did a great job playing uh, the son of Dracula in the film Son of Dracula. Although he may have just been Dracula, pretending to be the son, Alucard, Count Alucard. Uh, he played the mummy in three mummy sequels, which was originally a Boris Karloff role. The first mummy was Boris Karloff, uh, but Lon Chaney Jr. played him three times. He also played the Frankenstein's monster <laughs> in Ghost of Frankenstein before he played the Wolfman again. In Frankenstein versus the Wolfman, so it's a very it was a very incestuous relationship that the Universal monster actors had. You see, um, he uh, was uh, known to be a pretty hardcore drunk by the time Spider Baby was filmed in the mid sixties, and uh, rumor is that he quit drinking. To shoot Spider Baby because he liked the script so much and didn't want to mess it up. And I I remember reading where somebody had talked to him during the during the making of Spider Baby and they said, Don't you feel better? Don't you feel better now that you haven't been drinking? And he said, No, no, I don't. I don't feel like I have control of my life. Something along those lines. I don't have the transcript next to me. Now, also, we have the beautiful Carol Omar as, uh, what's her name in the film? Carol Omar as Emily. Yes, Aunt Emily. Uh, Most horror film fans know her from House on Haunted Hill, where she played Vincent Price's bitch wife. Um, She basically plays the same character again here. Uh... But she's fantastic. She's absolutely fantastic. Uh, the, the, the she was she was when she first got into acting, she was called a female Brando and the next Marilyn Monroe. And uh, but that was early on in her career. By the time she shot Spider Baby, she was asking director Jack Hill 
do you think we could win an Oscar for this? Um, no. No, not for Spider Baby. Spider Baby will never be acknowledged by anyone but people like you and me. Not the Academy. Such an amazing film. Uh, who else do we got? We got, uh, let me, let me, let me consult my notes. We got, uh, Beverly Washburn as Elizabeth. She's great. She's great. The older sister, Elizabeth. And, uh, Jill Banner. What's that? You ought to hate her. You ought to hate her. Uh, breakout performance by Jill Banner as Virginia. Um, Virginia, Jill Banner, she, uh, she didn't do much. I mean, she, she worked, you know, but mostly she would be known from Dragnet reruns. She apparently was in a ton of Dragnet episodes. Um, she gave up on acting in the, uh, mid eighties, in the mid seventies to start doing, uh, real estate. And she uh, was killed in a car wreck. Oh. She was killed in a car wreck. There are rumors that she dated Marlon Brando. Oh. But considering their age difference, I chose not to pursue those rumors. Mm -hmm. I don't want to know nothing about that. Gross. And of course, Sid Haig. Sid Haig. Sid Haig. We did this earlier. Sid Haig, he's, he's, he's known throughout the world now as Captain Spaulding, the most amusing character of the Firefly Clan in Rob Zombie's films, every single one of them, it seems like. Um, I love him as Ralph. I love him as Ralph. Ralph is amazing, and I love how Virginia, like, barks his name and gets so excited. It's just such a... It's such a fun film. It's very um, heartwarming and endearing in its creepiness. Well, it's very gothic. It's got that very gothic atmosphere to it. Yeah. But like I've, like I've said before, it's like gothic meets Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm -hmm. And the two meld beautifully. The yeah. two ideas meld beautifully. Now, director Jack Hill, he made numerous exploitation films, uh, many of which he was known for much more than this film. Uh, you know, he made The Big Dollhouse. Uh, he made uh, he made all kinds of women in prison movies. Um, he made lots of black exploitation movies. His, his most popular films were probably Coffee and Foxy Brown, both starring Pam Greer. Pam. She was, a, she was his major discovery at one point. But for me, Spider Baby will always be the definitive Jack Hill film. Uh, there's nothing like it. I put I put Spider Baby in the same category as Basket Case in the it's the cast of characters that makes the film. Oh yeah. If you watch Spider Baby and you watch Basket Case, it's the combination of characters that makes the film just goddamn near magical. Oh. You know, I mean it's it's I mean, some people will talk a bunch of crap about Basket Case, but I'll tell you what, those, those... Hello, boy. Mm. <laughs> those characters in Basket Case and Spider Baby, there's, there's, there's nothing like them. You don't need a story in Basket Case or Spider Baby, because you have these characters that are so right and so endearing that you just continue to watch to see what happens. <clears throat> so apparently there's an Uncle Ned yes, somewhere. Uncle Ned. We haven't met Uncle Ned yet, but we shall soon. They do love their Uncle Ned. They do love their Uncle Ned. Yes. And if you really look at it, it really is just the story of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre again. I mean, before. Yes. You have some outsiders coming into a family household. Not knowing the family ways. Exactly. 
and 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 dealing with what comes with that. Absolutely. So anyway, enough of our jibber jabber. Let's get back to Spider Baby. We'll probably join you once more before the conclusion. And we'll uh, see y'all in a few minutes. Oh, uh, there's so much more to come. <laughs> there is. Absolutely. We're at the halfway point. Ooh. Enjoy. Nothing's happened yet, and so much happens in this movie. So much happens in this movie. All right. Spider-Man. Oh, Say, it's uh, still early, Miss Morse. Perhaps you'd like to have a drink at that inn in the village that uh, Bruno mentioned? I'd like that very much, Mr. Howe. Oh, and uh, maybe a sandwich, if you don't mind. Tuck you in, Daddy. Nighty night, Daddy.
up to here. But I'm going to have to call in the authorities. Now, there are laws. Criminal laws, I'm... I'm not going to hate you. I knew this was coming someday. But it's so soon. And you really and truly don't hate me? I promised your daddy I'd never, never hate you. You did? You got to hate him. Elizabeth, I told you it isn't nice to hate. Children, I, I, I've got something I want to tell you, and I, I want you to listen very, very carefully. A long, long time ago, I, I promised your daddy that I'd take care of you and Ralph forever and ever. And then came this Mr. Schlocker. He was a, a nasty, mean man. He wanted to take you away where old Bruno would never see you again. But you hurt Mr. Schlocker, and he can't do that now. But soon there'll be more Mr. Schlockers, and they'll be nastier and meaner than he was. And you won't be able to hurt all them because There'll be too many of them. They can't take me away from you, Bruno. They can't make me go away. You won't let them, will you, Bruno? <laughs> I promised your daddy I wouldn't. I knew you wouldn't, Bruno. I'm not afraid. Well, we didn't have much time anyway. Pretty soon, Ralph, he'll be ready to join Uncle Ned and Aunt Clara. And then you. We want to stay here forever and ever, Bruno. With you and, and Ralph and Uncle Ned. We will. I promise. Forever and ever. We will. You know? I know where there's a nice new toy that'll do a wonderful thing. A toy? Yes. And you can stay up late just to see it. 
Can we? Uh-huh. Now, I have to go a little ways to get it. But it'll only take me a little while. Please don't go away, Bruno. I'm scared. It won't take but a few minutes. And I'll be back. Now, Elizabeth, I expect you to take care of your brother and sister and see that they don't get in any trouble. Will you do that? Oh, I will, Bruno. <laughs> A wolf fan, fan, and oh yes, I think that's how every man should be, like a wild beast. No vacancy again. That's the last one, Anne. There isn't another town for fifty miles. See, I guess we shouldn't have spent all that time at the village inn. Hmm. I didn't realize how late it was getting. You lose count, they keep taking away the glasses. What was that? I know, but I remember exactly how many. Uh, listen, I don't, there's nothing we can do except go back and spend the night with Emily and Schlocker.
All right, here we are at the, the, the we've just finished the sleaziest part oh. of Spider Baby. I'm sorry, the second sleaziest part of Spider Baby. The sleaziest is yet to come. You've got Carol Omar running around in garter belts and a wispy black gown. She looks fantastic. And I, I, I will say. Fantastic. I will never have a problem with Kel, Carol Omar slinking around in garter belts and a slinky black gown. Gosh, I will never have a problem with that. Amazing. I mean, if I was to find her in my house doing that, I would probably pull Ralph. No, you And hang wouldn't. upside down from my ankles to catch myself a peep. No, you wouldn't. If she was dancing like that, I probably would. You're not it. You haven't read my file. So, we got Caramel Omar running around like that. We got, uh, we got Uncle Peter and Anne driving around drunk. They are. They're Couldn't drunk find a driving. goddamn hotel room. They're wasted. They're looking to... I think so. I think so, too. Talking about wild beast, man. Wild beast. That was a great scene. I forgot to bring that up earlier. Was, uh, was where, where they were talking about classic monsters. And, and, and they mentioned the Wolfman. And Lon Chaney Jr., of all people, yes. says, There's a full moon out tonight. I love that. I love that so part. So good. So oh. good. So goddamn good. So, yes, it's a sleazy film. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a throwaway. It's a drive-in trash piece. And yet, that scene... That one scene we just watched a little bit ago with Lon Chaney Jr., Beverly Washburn, and Jill Banner yes. all hanging out there in the basement. And Lon Chaney Jr. coming up with the with the with the plan. The toy that he's gonna The gonna toy. Get. The new toy That's he's gonna, gonna get. Fix everything. It's one of the most beautiful pieces of acting I've ever seen in my life. On the parts of all three of them. Absolutely. It's it, in the in the middle of this trash masterpiece, you have this scene of total emotion and feeling and it's just gorgeous. It's just goddamn gorgeous. You know? It is. It's heart-wrenching. Really heart-wrenching. It really is. Yeah. It really is. I don't really know what more to say about it. Just, uh, you know. There's so much more to come. It's goddamn beautiful. We should find out soon what that toy is and what this plan is. Oh, we will. Not only that, but we'll find out where Uncle Ned is. That's right. And Aunt Clara. Uncle Ned and Aunt Clara. That's right. Well, we got to see Daddy. We did get we to see did Daddy. We did get to see Daddy. He's, he's probably doing better. Than Uncle Ned. Yeah, perhaps. If you really think about Sometimes it. Sometimes dead is better. Sometimes dead is better. That's right. Ready for the next? As Herman Munster is wont to say. <laughs> I'm excited to see what happens next. I hope you yes. are too. Now for the thrilling conclusion of Spider Baby. Spider Baby. Mm -hmm. Spiders aren't supposed to eat other spiders. Cannibal spiders do. Bruno! Bruno! It doesn't sound 
I do know. Oh, no, it's Uncle Peter and that pretty lady. They've come back. Virginia, you mustn't hurt anyone else. Bruno will really hate you. He will not. Anyway, I like Uncle Peter. He's not like that bad man. All the same, they'll tell on us. Would they? Would they tell? Of course they'll tell. Bruno said there'd be others, didn't he? They're coming. What do we do? We'll have to make a plan. Somebody's up and about. Good. I hope it's not that Ralph. Oh, Ralph's just a big kid. Do you really think so? Sure. Very nice. And this way, pretty lady. I'm glad you came back. I like you. I like you, too. you right away. You're not like those others. Oh, Virginia likes you, too. And Ralph, we all like you. And Uncle Peter, too. <laughs> you never tell, no matter what Bruno says. You'd never tell. I know you wouldn't. black spider goes round and round and wraps the bug all up on her spider web. Mm. Virginia, what happens when the spider
spider gets the bug all wrapped up in a web. Aha! Uh -huh. I won't tell. Ah, <laughs> all right. How long does it take to play this game? Oh, uh, we're almost done. Oh, yeah. All right. There now. Spider, what's the spider do now? What? Oh, yes. Um, now the spider does a little dance. She has to tease it, torment it, <laughs> and make him work it so that his juice will taste better. Virginia, I think we'd better play another game. Uncle Peter? Do you like that pretty lady? Yes. Yes, I do. Do you like me? Uh, when does Mr. Bruno come back? Bruno won't hate me. He promised. But I guess bugs don't like spiders very much. I like spiders. I like spiders. I do, too. Well... I guess I have to sting you now. You have to what? Uh, Virginia, what about Mr. Schlocker? Mr. Schlocker? Hey, Slocker! Sing! Well, I have to go away for a minute. But I'll be right back. Don't go away, Bug. With her. Don't you know? You made this plan. But I didn't have enough time to finish it. She wiggles just like a big squiggly bug in a spider web. <laughs> hmm. Uncle Ned could make her quiet. No. Bruno would be very mad. Anyway, Ralph likes her, see? We mustn't hurt her. Just make her quiet. Ah. Now, a spider is very clever. She very cleverly drains the vital juices from the bug's body. And that makes the bug stop squiggling. Would that make her stop squiggling? <laughs> Help me find something sharp.
make her quiet. Then Ralph can play with her better. <laughs> yourself into this predicament, but I suggest that you leave the premises as quickly as possible. And where's Anne? Anne, where's Anne? Ah. If I were you, I'd hurry, sir. I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. amazing experience. But, for me anyway, a lot of good came of this. Uh, being the only survivor, 
Naturally, I inherited the wealth of the Marys, which uh, later turned out to be quite vast. <laughs> uh, more important than that, though, my wife. That's our daughter, Jessica. Mommy, may I go outside now? Well, all right, Jessica, dear. But be sure and come back into the house if it starts raining again. Oh, I will, Mommy. And so the Mary Syndrome was extinguished forever with the family that carried it. Uh, my own branch of the family, being rather distant, we never suffered from the uh, curse. Somewhere between 50 and 200, yeah, we've amazing. watched Spider Baby. Uh, it's real hard. It's real hard to get Carol Omart out of my mind dancing about. I know. She's amazing. She's amazing. She wakes up. She's like, Rab. Rab. There's lots of, uh, But, well, the uh, spider game, I mean, we, we find out what... The movie's man. gross. The movie really is gross. Uncle Peter if you, if is you, a good Uncle man. Peter is a really good man. I mean, he's, he, he, the has, crazy he doesn't want anything to do with that. Lolita spider game is much. And you could just it's see true. him get freaked out. He's like, yep. uh, maybe we shouldn't play this game, you know? And then he almost succumbs to it. You know, he likes the spider, but it's still really weird. It proves that he's a very good man, and he really likes the pretty lady. Pretty lady. <laughs> pretty lady, you won't tell, will you? Pretty lady. Let us give props to Beverly Washburn. Oh, my God. She's... She was fantastic. As, uh, what the hell was her name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Beverly Washburn as Elizabeth. As Elizabeth. And Virginia. Jill Banner as Virginia. They were both great. Everybody was goddamn great in this movie. Mm -hmm. That was one thing about this movie. Like I was saying about Bass Case earlier, is that virtually every character in this film, you loved watching them. Yes. You had a wonderful time watching them. If you didn't, I don't know, that's your goddamn I mean, problem. That's not mine. Scene. But I did. Yeah. When that, that moment where... They're the silhouette on the stairs and Schlocker falls yes. down the stairs. That is there amazing. <laughs> it is gorgeous. Oh my god. Kill him! Oh, so good. So great. I love it. I don't know what's not to love about this film. No, it, it, it's a it's a it's a wonderful film. There's nothing quite like it. No. We hope you've enjoyed this first edition of Movies from the Madhouse. We'll be again. We'll be here again soon. We will, and we'll be inviting you back to our living room because this really is our house, not a set. It's our home, and it's our crazy Madhouse monster house. And 
we're really excited to have you back. And if you have seen this movie a million times, we really hope that you enjoyed watching it with us. And if this is new to you, then you're welcome because Spider Baby is a favorite.